this is about Jacques Vaughn. So Jacques Vaughn is a coach that easily could have saved his job if he just played Cam Thomas the whole year and developed Cam Thomas and gave him the opportunities. He decided to build the offense around Ben Simmons. I don't understand that at all. Um, maybe four years ago, but this is a Ben Simmons that was very unreliable and you could not base your entire offense off that. Cam Thomas was coming off the bench earlier in this year, which I wouldn't have done, but I, I, I can even understand it a little bit, maybe a little. But once Cam Thomas in the first two games proved that he was the best scorer on this team, he had to be inserted into the starting lineup. He had to. And considering that he was starting at one point, the team was 13 and 10. And then for some reason, he went back to the bench and he started getting benched at the end of games. I went to a game versus the Hornets this year uh, with no Lamella ball or anything. The Hornets just like a bad Hornets team. Rozier went crazy, but just not a good Hornets team at all. And he benched Cam Thomas and the Nets lost by one because they couldn't score down the stretch. And Cam Thomas was the leading scorer of the game. It was his first game back from injury. I don't want to hear anything about a minutes restriction. If this is like your best scorer, he's got to be out there on the floor. There's no question. This load management stuff, I've been in, I've been through it in the past. It's, it's garbage. So Cam Thomas not playing this year is a huge reason to me why Jacques Vaughn is gone. And Mikel Bridges' stunted growth I've been off on Mikel Bridges, like I said, but he was expected to be an all-star capable player this year. If not make an all-star team, be in that conversation. Mikel Bridges has not been that this year. So is that a lot to do with Jacques Vaughn's offense? Who knows? The, the most concerning part for me was not just the Cam Thomas stuff, which was crazy, and but there was hints of that in Orlando. Like He would like bench Oladipo and play the vets over in Orlando, and he had some young players there and just didn't play him. So Jacques Vaughn has this mentality, you know, he, it's just very frustrating, but also with this is the team is a bad defensive team and they have defensive players on the roster. Like how, how do you even defend that? Nick Claxton, I say upon it, Nick Claxton, great defender, Dorian Finney Smith, great defender. Cam Johnson can defend Mikel Bridges. I think right now this season is an overrated defender, but he could still defend. Right. Spencer Dinwiddie's not a great defender, but he's six six. Like, why can't you make that work? And Ben Simmons, obviously, at times this year, really the only bad defensive player on the roster is like Cam Thomas. He had Royce O'Neal for a lot of this year. Why was the defense so bad? The offense isn't great. And now the defense isn't good either. Like, at least your defense needs to be pretty good if you know you're not going to be able to score. And if you know you have a problem scoring the ball, why do you bench your best scorer? Jacques Vaughn was doing this on a daily basis. And David Aldridge tweeting that stuff like shocked that I thought he was joking. Shocked that Jacques Vaughn was fired when the Nets are two and a half games out of the plan. Did he not know that the Nets were 13 and 10 and a top seven team in the Eastern Conference at that point? Maybe, maybe top eight, but top like top eight team. Without keep in mind sometimes closing with Cam Thomas and like injuries to start that year. And Mikel Bridge is not playing amazing yet. Like those things were happening and they were 13 and 10 and just beat the Phoenix Suns, the big three debut and in Phoenix and the team nosedived started all with that resting BS in Milwaukee, which you can blame the front office for that. You can blame Jacques Vaughn for that. Who knows? All I know is the season changed right after that. That was inexcusable. That was stupid. Should have never been done. And I don't know who you blame there. But Jacques Vaughn definitely had a hand in it, I would assume. And some of the bizarre post-game comments and comparing the, his players to his children about authority. And it's just, it all didn't rub well. I'm surprised he wasn't let go in December because the team clearly wasn't responding to him anymore. I think they were waiting till the end of the season to make a decision because they're still paying Steve Nash's contract. and But they had to make it after they lost by fucking 50 to the Boston Celtics and lost by 30 the day before that, around that. Just non-competitive whatsoever, even after the Schroeder trade. And all of it, Jacques Vaughn deserved to lose his job. It's really that simple. And he will probably, not probably, 
I don't see him getting another head coaching job again, unless it's interim. He may be an assistant. I think he'll definitely be an assistant. But he had a glorious opportunity this year to be to kind of be the head coach of a fun, athletic, fun defensive team that could kind of wash away the stars. And he was doing that, I guess, kind of earlier in the year, even though I had issues with him. But, man, the way it reacted, it was not good. It was not good after that Milwaukee Bucks game. As far as coaching replacements, I had seen many coaches uh, thrown out there. Uh, As far as real, like, candidates that I think are very possible, there are two. And that's Mike D'Antoni and Mike Budenholzer, who are the two best coaches out there. I've seen Terry Stotts. Adrian Griffin, I even saw mentioned, which is a hard pass, hard no. Since Doc Rivers is not there anymore, it's not going to happen. Doc Rivers is going to be in Milwaukee. Um, There is no good coach out there uh, that I could see losing their jobs after this year. Adoka's in Houston. uh, Ty Lue's with the Clippers. If the Clippers season had gone haywire, then maybe I could see Ty Lue, and then I would be down for that. But to me, it's Mike D'Antoni and Mike Budenholzer. And if you asked, if you have to ask me who the favorite is, I'm going to say it's Mike Budenholzer. Considering his past with the Spurs, considering Sean Marks' ties with the Spurs, the Nets right now need regular season stability. They need regular season stability. They have really good defensive talent on the roster. And Mike Budenholzer, who I know gets a lot of flack for a lot of his playoff flops, took an Al Horford, Al Horford, as the best player. Maybe Paul Millsap, but Al Horford. That team won 60 games. And they went to the conference finals. That was a Mike Budenholzer team. Mike Budenholzer does have a championship with the Bucs. And I know we could say KD and Kyrie, they got injured. He probably would have lost his job at them. Fair enough. Fair enough. But he would have lost to a really talented team. It's not like he would have lost to a team that's not better than him. Like, that team was better than him. So... You know, I can't, there's the Raptors, there's the heat with the bubble, but, and then there's obviously last year's heat series, but he lost his brother. Mike Budenholzer has a really good defensive scheme as well, which would fit with the Nets personnel a lot, maybe other than a Mike D'Antoni, right? So D'Antoni only makes sense if, like I said, you're getting Donovan Mitchell and you want Mitchell to kind of like take over. You have the three and D wings, you shoot a ton of threes, you know, D'Antoni makes sense in that perspective, so I could see that happening. Um, If the Nets decide maybe not Donovan Mitchell for some reason, we want to, if Atlanta's ready to move on from Trey Young, maybe the Nets go after Trey Young. And then you could put Trey Young with those defensive wings, with Claxton, Bridges, and then you have Mike D'Antoni just have Trey Young do everything. That makes a lot of sense too. I don't know if that's the best recipe for success, but in the regular season, that could be a move as well. I'm just saying that these are backup plans if Mitchell's not the person. But Mike Budenholzer makes the most sense to me as just the coach that fits them. All I know is, Sean Marks, you need to hire an established guy that's going to guarantee regular season success and has history doing it. And Mike D'Antoni and Mike Budenholzer are those guys. We've messed around with the rookie head coaches. We've messed around. I'm saying we like them on the team. The Nets have messed around with rookie head coaches. They've messed around with interim head coaches. I don't want to see Kevin Ollie be the head coach or Will Weaver, whoever's in there. Because I know that the Nets are probably going to be better after this Jacques Vaughn firing. And I know it's fool's gold. I know none of these guys are the dudes. They're not the guys. So do that head coaching search. Marks has to hire this man, and it must be the right man because he's done if it's not. And to me, if you hire Budenholzer, if you hire. Dan Tony, that guarantees that your regular season will be competitive. And that's what I want to see. It's been far too long since a good coach has been with the Nets. You could say Kenny, but Kenny was dealing with a lot of talent. Like you could tell Kenny was a good coach, but was he a great coach? And to me, like Budenholzer and Dan Tony, 50 wins in the regular season, we'll deal with the playoff stuff later. Let's just get there. Let's just build a regular season consistency. And to me, that's the guy. But Jacques Vaughn had to go. There was no doubt about it.